Good afternoon and welcome to UMED TV. My name is Kamal Erkan. I'm here with Sean Donovan from our business development team. Sean, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Kamal, how are you? Good. Um, so we are uh, going to take a detour today. Um, so uh, we actually felt like there is a there would be a really good benefit of explaining our United Medical uh, Clinic, our primary care, mainly primary care and pediatric office, and share um, uh, the program, the practice structure, and make sure that our uh, patients are able to understand exactly what to expect and also get to know the practices if they are new uh, to the practice. So we have, um, a, we prepare a couple of videos. Uh, so we are gonna follow those. Um, hopefully everything should go okay there. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I have to do is sign in in the Zoom because I don't want that to check us out. Okay, so we want to actually start with the introduction of the practice. Um, and let me make sure that our videos are in the right order. Um, Sean, did you want to start from the intro? Yeah. Um, so as Paul mentioned, today we're actually going to cover uh, UMC clinic, uh, dive a little bit into more detail than we normally do on you know, general overview, but also specifics that patients who are either new to the practice or may actually be existing patients and just not know of some of the resources we have, uh, we want to dive into those and make them a little bit more well-known, um, how to access them more available. Um, that way everyone's aware of, you know, the ins and outs of being a patient and kind of what to expect and also what is expected of you from your end as the patient. Um, so just to start off, we do have our general overview. Uh, you'll see on the slides that are uh, cycling below um, are mentioning our services, what we have, um, obviously preventative care, uh, being PCP practice, we do offer um, lots, lots of uh, pieces and also pediatrics um, as well. So. so we added some of those specialties that they used to be our clients before mm -hmm. and they actually uh, became uh, part of the uh, United Medical Clinic. United Medical Clinic started as a primary care office. Uh, then later on, we had the pediatrics join us. And um, so from the location standpoint, going from north to south, uh, so we have an office in downtown Wilmington. That office actually is expanding. Uh, by end of this uh, year, there will be 10 extra uh, exam rooms. So, which is going to put us in a really good position to see more patients in person in the downtown location. Now, downtown Wilmington is, is extremely important, uh, especially for primary care and pediatric standpoint. But also, this is our um, uh, annex of our business office, uh, where we would be able to have certain meetings and uh, also, it's an excellent place for our nutritionists uh, like from the central office standpoint. So we are going to be able to uh, service more patients in, uh, in that location. So that's our goal. Now, just so that uh, our, our patients uh, or prospect patients understand, so in 2022, total of 46,000 appointments, um, we were able to provide uh, and this is uh, like almost uh, 16,400 patients. So there is a big uh, volume and we are, we want to make sure that um, uh, in today's condition, providing service without um, compromising from the quality is extremely difficult and United Medical Clinic is uh, trying to do that while we are at the same time competing with uh, non-profit organizations such as Christiana, Christiana Hospital, Bay Health, uh, St. Francis, and other 
hospitals in the nation in in, in the state of Delaware. Mm -hmm. So um, we mentioned the number of specialties we had um, uh, and how the service line is expanding uh, and being able to uh, do more for the uh, community. That's uh, that's our main goal. So, Jean, if you kind of go through our physicians and providers who we have. Sure. Um, and just a question that even I just thought of, which maybe a prospective patient may have the uh, same inquiry, but just from a standpoint, if someone was trying to maybe see one of our specialists um, without already being seen one of our PCPs, are they able to, you know, sign up and join maybe just to start seeing um, our bariatrician or the pulmonary? They don't have, we don't have to be their primary care right. uh, for those specialists that we have under United Medical Clinic. Mm -hmm. So that's a good question because we are not a single specialty. So we are a multi-specialty mm -hmm. in terms of the practice structure standpoint. So if someone just wants to see uh, our bariatrician, which in the case of our bariatric program from uh, American Surgery Center, uh, there are patients who would only come for Dr. Van Singh and then get their bariatric clearance for the bariatrician. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then they will go back to their primary care. And this is also true for our pulmonary, uh, now Dr. Uh, Foriki, who's part of the group. So there may be someone uh, who already has PCP and then they will come and get their pulmonary services from uh, our practice. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say 90% or maybe 92% of the total is our uh, primary care and pediatrics altogether. Okay, yeah, just want to make sure everyone was clear on that, just in case that was maybe a hindrance or hesitation. Um, but yeah, I can definitely go through and just, again, as you mentioned, you started with our Wilmington location. That is our newest office. Uh, we also do have the one here across from our central business office is our Bexco location. Um, and then down south, we have our Smyrna office. So most of our providers tend to work at the same location for the bulk of where they see patients, but it isn't uh, common to have some of them up from location to location. Um, and obviously, as you know, we do have telemedicine appointments. So if you're not seeing the, the provider in person at the office. Sure. And telemedicine is the key, especially now for this um, flu season. So uh, as you may remember, uh, prior to uh, COVID, uh, telemedicine was not utilized properly. Mm -hmm. And COVID actually pushed everyone to take advantage of the telemedicine. And now we have a really good structure to uh, provide a really good quality uh, service through telemedicine. So if someone already has, may have flu or some other, uh, or they may be worried about getting the flu. So if you are in one of our uh, waiting rooms, the chances are you're going to be sharing that waiting room with someone who may already have the flu. So, uh, and if you don't want to be in that setting, telemedicine is a good way to um, get out of those types of situations. So, uh, but in, in, in times, we would like to see the patients in person, mm -hmm. and that's determined by the um, uh, by the providers and the physicians. Right. So, uh, that, uh, that should not be um, that should not be a problem. I think one of the main issues also we have is the way that we structure United Medical Clinic in the United Medical ACO. And then therefore, the way that we have our patient wellness programs, mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, patients may be confused uh, when they are getting calls for different uh, from different places, sure. but that, that actually those calls are coming from one place, that is United Medical um, Central Office. So because we are able to take advantage of the economy of scale that we have. So then we are able to provide certain services in the central office, from the central office, uh, which mm -hmm. is our care coordination team, our uh, nutritionists and uh, dietitians, uh, behavioral health specialists, our social workers, yeah. uh, medical weight loss programs, the fall prevention with our PTs, and the way that we manage uh, hospital admissions and readmission prevention. So those are all uh, benefits of uh, having a bigger practice and also being part of the ACO. Mm -hmm. So now we want to kind of explain uh, from this point uh, how this structure works uh, in yeah. the... I think that's, that's a good transition, actually, as you just mentioned that, because now our next video is actually on the care coordination. Um, but just to wrap up with the care team for those patients who maybe need to 
uh, want to learn more about their providers or are seeking a new PCP and want to get to know them, um, on our website, we do have our Meet Our Care team where you can actually go read their bio. Some of them do have videos talking about their experience, um, kind of what they do, what drew them to United Medical, what they like about our practice. Uh, so you feel free to check it out on the website, get to know them a little bit better. And some of the ones who don't have videos, we are in the works of getting those put together. So in the near future, you'll see those. Um, but as you said, a uh, good transition to the care coordination process. And uh, we're going to dive into a little bit of just how it's all interrelated and interconnected here. Well, the care coordination is something that we designed uh, specifically for United Medical ACO and all of our practices, not just United Medical Clinic, but all the other practices yeah. are part of this. So because, uh, again, what we mentioned earlier, uh, this is all about uh, prevention and how we can actually provide better service, uh, we, we have nurses and care coordinators who are helping the patients with those follow-ups that they may have with the specialist, or they may have, uh, they may have hospitalization, and then right after that, primary care uh, would like to see them, and then we would be calling and reaching out to them for those um, uh, follow-ups as well. And in some cases, uh, Sean, this is really important for, uh, hopefully for those who are, um, our patients who are watching this, uh, I think it's an important issue for everyone to understand. Today's um, uh, clinical integration is not about just physician or the provider seeing you in the office. So there is a team uh, and this team is a multidisciplinary, uh, from the multidisciplinary approach to the other extenders, ancillary uh, staff, such as our nurses, our care coordinators, us, like you and I, we are in those teams. Yeah. So uh, when patient comes to our offices for a specific uh, issue, we have, our providers have only limited time to deal with that issue. Now, yeah. what we are able to do from the care coordination side is to look at that patient's chart at a, a broader uh, perspective and then see issues that we may not be able to identify at the time of the visit. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you may be in our office um, only for, um, let's say, uh, A1C management. A1C is the blood work that determines whether or not you have diabetes. So then... And in many cases, when that happens, there are other comorbidities comes with. And one of the most um, underdiagnosed uh, issue that comes with these chronic illness is the obesity or morbid obesity. So providers may have to take care of that A1C issue and then take the A1C management approach. But in the case of uh, obesity or the morbid obesity, that we may need to work with the central office and then ask uh, to have a nutritionist appointment or the bariatrician appointment, or maybe suggest a bariatric surgery in some cases based on their BMI. Now, what we see in many cases, uh, neither patients nor the providers have enough time in that specific uh, visit. So right. this is why you would be getting a follow-up from the central office. And we would always discuss these with the providers, uh, so we would not take, we, we wouldn't actually reach out to any of the patients unless we have the provider's approval. Okay. Now, as our nurses and care coordinators are working throughout the day, one, uh, one thing that we, we were able to accomplish and establish is the um, case conference uh, process. So the, what uh, we do in the case conference, uh, as you are also part of this, there are two teams. Uh, one team is led by me and the other team is led by Donna Dunkel. Donna is our uh, director of clinical integration. So she and I, we have two teams. Uh, one of our business development resources, Sean is in my team, Kim uh, is in, the, in Donna's team. So then we have four nurses each and we have one social workers each and we have a pharmacist who rotates between the two teams. So every day, one hour, we are discussing the patients uh, flagged by our nurses that should be discussed and also see if we can actually help these patients in different ways. Yeah. Now, this is where you would be most common uh, phone calls or the text message you may be getting is from our social workers because we wanna make sure 
understanding providing the uh, care is not just diagnosing and treating, but it's really understanding the entire picture of the patient, which means we want to know where you live. We want to know your uh, financial um, uh, strength. Uh, we want to know your family uh, support strength. Uh, we want to understand our patient as a whole person rather than just, you know, okay, so we are going to give you two prescriptions to manage your A1C, and then we'll see you in six months. That's not what we want to do. So then social worker would identify whether or not if you need more support. Now, mm -hmm. this more support may come from us, or in some cases, it may be available through your insurance company. So this is why we are uh, very grateful for the resources that we have. And I think our social workers are extremely important for us to be able to complete the um, care that we are providing uh, for our patients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. And I think to kind of wrap that up into like a summation of the fact that we can't use that cookie cutter approach that every mm -hmm. patient is the same, you know, we have to actually, it's the social workers who are kind of on that front line, getting to know the patient, talking to them one-on-one -on -one over the phone, understanding their background, what may be uh, a difficult uh, scenario they're experiencing right now at the time, why they're missing that appointment, if they have a transportation issue. And knowing that and learning that from our patients is then what enables us to get them the type of care and quality care in the most effective manner possible. And sometimes, like you mentioned with the insurances, uh, patients are unaware of some of like, the benefits that are actually available to them Absolutely. and the services as yep. well. So I uh, give a lot of credit to the social workers, yeah. Well, um, now, in this process, uh, one of the reasons that we felt that we should have this video uh, as a, I'm the CEO of this operation, every time there is a, a bad outcome on any of our patient surveys, I review those personally. So it's been uh, screened through by my team and they actually give, provide all the information that I need. And I also reach out to the patients when we feel like there is a reason uh, that actually there was a breakdown on the service or communication yeah. or something that can be improved. So because I started doing that, uh, so then I also have a really good understanding of some of the issues that our uh, offices and our patients are dealing with. So we want, uh, hopefully, we want uh, our existing and new patients to watch um, this episode of our uh, YouTube show and uh, get a better understanding of some of the things that we are asking. So one, one uh, definite um, uh, element of the patient ask is the patient portal. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Now, in year 2023 and the year of uh, COVID and the pandemic and all the other issues, uh, communication and digital communication is the key uh, for every other probably industry, but it's more important for healthcare. So, um, Sean, you are part of the um, business development and then you probably get a lot of patient portal related issues. So how simple is to use the patient portal and what we can do with the yeah. portal? Uh, I mean, right when you sign up, you're going to get that invite uh, from the office. And it's, again, with our ACO, whether it's UMC being a specific PCP or any of the specialists, but they're all going to be inviting you if you do not already have an active portal you'll get that invite and it goes, all you need is your email address. That's all you're giving to them. And boom, the invite's sent right there. And literally takes less than a minute where you sign up. And the key with the portal is having that immediate um, communication line, but also think about um, like for me, example, if I get like blood work done or any labs, uh, any x-rays or whatever type of media or um, results that you're looking for, you're able to access that immediately and you'll get the notification pop up in the portal and you'll be able to communicate whether it's, um, you know, seeing your results, reviewing the results that you're waiting on. I know a lot of sometimes I add stress to patients if they're waiting, you know, oh, I need to see when I get my test back, but I can really go on that vacation or if I have to end up getting this surgery or, you know, X, Y, Z, um, you're getting that immediate feedback. Also, your provider or physician will be commenting on that, telling you, oh, you know, we saw that your levels of, you know, this cholesterol was high, but don't worry about you know, this, you know, it's still in a stable range. Um, but also with the portal, not only are you able to see the results, but like I said, having that communication line. So um, we're going to dive into this a little bit uh, later, but 
say if you need to uh, schedule or reschedule cancel appointments, but also getting medication refills, um, any other type of inquiry that you have, that's your immediate contact line as opposed to a traditional maybe trying to call the office if they're on, if on lunch or you know being on a phone call queue. This patient portal communication line is the most effective and efficient way. So, uh, and I wasn't actually checking the message, but I was trying to open the portal. Um, okay. So now, uh, even I'm the owner of the practice, mm -hmm. I still utilize all of our resources uh, and all the yeah. portals are available. So then I can actually uh, understand if there are any issues from the end user standpoint. So uh, while uh, Sean was explaining uh, what the patient portal is, I went to my app and then opened my chart. So I'm able to see uh, I write on my phone or if, if I'm at a computer. So it's just so simple to see certain things. Now I can, um, you know, right now on the first page, my latest lab results, if anyone is interested in my iron level, it's 134. Uh, okay. If you are interested in my iron uh, saturation, it's 29%. Mm -hmm. So, but the reason I had this last study uh, was my hemoglobin was low in uh, November, and this study is, my latest one is from March 2023. Now my hemoglobin is 14.8, so uh, there's no concern. So, and now I don't have to call anyone. Oh, yeah. So then um, now, um, while I'm here, um, I'm able to uh, go to my appointments. One of the things that, uh, you know, we are gonna go through the do's and don'ts of the certain things, mm -hmm. but, what portal uh, is able to give me is one i can see my upcoming appointment so let's see if i have one right now so i do have one um the screen is so one upcoming appointment i can see that and it just tells me that on september 21st okay actually that's coming up next week uh, i have an adult physical exam and then uh, at 1 p.m so uh, options i can add this to my calendar uh, I can view details, I can reschedule this appointment, or I can cancel this appointment. This is before we go to our uh, appointment reminder. So, um, yeah, um, so like, like I mentioned, as you're even showing right here on your phone, how easy it is to have that access. Again, you don't have to then call in, you're not trying to get in touch. I'm sure if they got your message that you're trying to reschedule or playing the phone tag, um, you're having this immediate access on, on your phone right there. And so, even if say you're out at lunch and, oh, I just forgot, I have an appointment tomorrow. Like you can do it right there. You don't have to be at home on your computer. Obviously you have the mobile uh, app right here, but um, yeah, and the do's and don'ts, we are gonna cover uh, a little bit about that rescheduling. Um, but one other thing you did mention though was the uh, appointment reminders. So we do have um, our text and call reminders that do go out three days before uh, the actual appointment time. Um, so it's during the normal business hours. So you're not gonna be getting you know phone calls at one in the morning mm -hmm. saying, I mean, it's, it's done usually by 3 p.m., mm -hmm. but it does call, uh, I think, three times, three attempts. Uh, so then, Until, yeah, to get mm -hmm. that, that voice uh, recognition would let it know if you're confirming verbally. Um, and why this is important, again, is like um, we want to uh, utilize this um, episode again, uh, maybe uh, have some uh, direct communication with uh, our patients. and. For example, I have a haircut appointment on uh, Saturday. Um, yesterday, I got a, a message saying that, please confirm this appointment. So, and I did confirm, but every time I don't, then I get a phone call. And same thing with us. So if we, we look at the reason we run the appointment report three days before for the confirmation, so then it gives us at least two business days to reach out to those patients. Right who are not able to confirm their appointments. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we ask our patients is to take uh, these appointment reminders seriously. So then we have limited number of um, translations last minute and no shows. And uh, also you can prep for the upcoming visit, but right. from the practice, there is numerous, so many different times, so many different uh, number of uh, attempts that we have to uh, close that gap. So now I want, uh, I want to explain now, we went through the patient portal, we went through the appointment reminder, but there's one other communication. Uh, again, this is a clinical 
uh, clinically integrated group. So if we were just one PCP physician in one location and then all I see is 20 patients and it was 1967, beautiful. So you didn't have to worry about any of these. So you would make the payments by chicken uh, oh. or maybe like um, some tomatoes and some cheese or yogurt or oh, milk, tomato. but it's not 1967 anymore. So then we have, uh, we have a system in place that requires so many things from the primary care office mainly. So uh, because communication is the key and because some patients uh, they may not use the EMR portal. We created um, a, a another portal for us to be able to reach out to more patients. Mm -hmm. So I want to actually, uh, and I don't know, uh, Sean, I, if I told you this, why we had to do that. So even if someone has a portal, like yeah. the, from the EMR, uh, some in some cases for them to open that message, like uh, they won't see what we send them unless they open the message. Yeah. So to eliminate that, we created uh, our database emails, which okay. goes directly to the emails, and it's on the subject line. It will tell you exactly why we are reaching out to you. Sure. So. All these efforts are uh, it is for us to be able to increase uh, communication and close the communication gap. Yes. So with the quick base emails, again, this is also related to our case conference process. So um, the nurses, as we're going through these patient audits, looking at their charts, seeing what they may, what type of specialist or referral they may actually need, like, oh, this patient with the high blood pressure, hypertension, you know, let's get them into the cardiologist. So these uh, email templates, it's already filled out. It'll be specific to the patient, point in obviously their name, uh, any other relevant information, if it's like a lab level specific to them. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned, it's going to write to that email address with the subject line. So they'll know, oh, diabetes management or high risk diabetes where you really need to go in, you know, see the end of. Mm -hmm. um, and not only are they clinical ones, like you're mentioning, we also have uh, reminders, um, say it's like a high no show, um, or I'm just thinking off the top of my head, we have- Well, the, if they have multiple no-shows, if they have um, uh, compliance issues with the medications, so case in um, appearance, yeah. if they have issues with the specialist follow-ups, so we have those types of emails, but mainly, uh, again, our goal is, so we take this very seriously, and why, while we are doing that, we also understand that this is not one-sided, so there are Right. two parties uh, to this. So we want to do our part best and we want our patients to also understand what's needed from their side. And then they can um, they can have a pleasant uh, experience from the uh, practice uh, services standpoint. Now, the um, one of the um, uh, one of the other things with the uh, portal if anyone is having any issues on the United Medical website um, or United, United Medical Clinic website, you will be able to see how to videos. There's a section and then that would actually explain uh, certain things, how to sign up uh, and all that thing uh, will be covered in that um, uh, in that in those videos. So you would be able to see them now. Um, I think we're okay to go to do's and don'ts now, right? Did they yeah. cover everything? Yeah, I mean, as you said, with those quick base emails, again, I just pulled up the slide that they may have been seen in the uh, the slide deck down there, but also it'll be like friendly reminders on, oh, your blood work, you know, you had a blood work order, we really need to get that in. That way we can proceed with, uh, you know, seeing if we need to get you a referral to their specialist. But um, but yeah, I think that's that's a pretty spot on, on on the quick base emails. And then now, yes, as you mentioned, the do's and don'ts. So kind of just like, the best practices that's the term we use here on on what's the most effective uh approach to being a successful patient no do's and don'ts is kind of tricky so because we are here to provide a service and we appreciate all of our patients who choose us for their primary care and uh, pediatric and other services however um especially um uh, I actually look at all the surveys uh, with the negative um, results. I can identify certain issues. Um, these certain issues, uh, whether or not can we improve what we do from our side versus 
is there a gap on the patient's understanding? And then both are given. So both are uh, both can happen. In some cases, um, anyone who is uh, who's not maybe aware of uh, this, but uh, they should be, there is definitely a shortage of uh, good quality um, employee resources. So COVID actually changed all the uh, equation. So, and this is not limited with the medical practices. This is also true for any other, spe uh, any other industry and all the friends that I talk to and all the other people that I deal with, they have the same uh, issue. The issue is, well, uh, there's always the shortage of employees. Now, this is not patient's fault, uh, but this was also true 10 years ago. So uh, when you were to call one of the medical offices, if you call them on their main line, easily you would be on hold for 20, 25 minutes. That's uh, that's not the best, but it's it's kind of like, you know, it is it is what it is. So um, now we know why that's happening. Uh, and I, uh, I'm gonna say that, um, I'm going to tell you why it's happening, because when you call uh, American Airlines, you don't get a live person no, yeah. when you call them. What you get is they, the automated system tells you, well, tell us, uh, well, just leave your number or just we'll record your um, call and we'll be calling you at this time or that time. Right. So you would be the fifth on the queue or tenth of on the queue. But that's uh, pretty much... Uh, uh, everyone accepted that without any problems. But when it comes to, unfortunately, when it comes to healthcare, um, we don't have the same uh, appreciation or um, same, uh, maybe, uh, same uh, kind of like understanding of why uh, like certain things ha cannot happen or should happen. Mm -hmm. uh, your video is fine, actually. So it's a little bit blurred, but I think it's oh, okay. yeah. so, so, and more than blurred. So. Um, so here's what's happening. Um, here's what we expect. Um, phone calls, I would love to answer all the phone calls uh, right on the time that they call us. But we gave some numbers earlier. So when you have uh, 16,000 patients to serve in one uh, calendar year, um, it's uh, humanly impossible. Uh, almost inhumane for us to be able to answer calls at, uh, as they are coming in because there's so many calls coming in uh, and then you can only answer, you can only have so many people. Even if we hire you know, 200 people, there will be times where they won't be able to answer all of the calls. So the solution is two ways. And this is why we put these do's and don'ts. And many of these things are the things that I cover when I call the patients on our uh, survey follow-up. Yeah. Because I see a chronic problem where someone is just calling. Look, so my, again, my uh, haircut, uh, hair salon or the barber says, you know, you have an appointment on 9.16, 1 p.m. If they were to call me, I was never gonna pick up that, right? So they text me and then I say, all I need to say is not even like you spell out the yes. I just, all I need to say is like the letter Y. Mm -hmm. And that takes care of, so now they expect me on that day. So that means they communicate and then they um, they complete their part, right? So we expect the same thing. So this expectation is when you are getting an appointment, if it's not urgent, calling is not your best option. So we have people in the call center, but we have also people who are answering the incoming um, inquiries uh, from the patient portal and from the uh, database portal and right. two different places that we are still able to call people uh, as we are getting the messages. So that's the best way to do it. So instead of like someone, uh, and this is not even uh, like any of these things, anyone wants to challenge it, please uh, come and sit down with me and I will uh, show you exactly what we have. So someone uh, complains about being uh, on hold for 25 minutes. The reason for the call, canceling my appointments. Well, you know, yeah. don't bother. So just go to your portal, or if you don't use the patient portal, go to one of our quick base uh, patient inquiries and put a request for translation. We'll take care of it. Yeah. But if you insist on uh, talking to someone, that's not acceptable. And it's not reasonable. 
So uh, the reason I'm giving you my uh, Barbara example is because I don't do that when I deal with other practices as a person. So then why would we expect that uh, that type of yes. uh, service? Why would you have to talk to someone to cancel your, you know, rescheduling your appointment? You can always utilize the uh, uh, portal. Now, uh, one of the most common um, issue with the uh, with the don'ts uh, do's and don'ts uh, we can start maybe from the prescription uh, medication refills mm -hmm. so and you you and i we see so many of these in our uh, case conferences yes, right. mm -hmm. yeah. so um with the prescriptions i think as you mentioned it's very common in the in the case conference we see a lot of times where patients will be getting that flag because of we think, oh, they stopped taking the medication because they haven't gotten it refilled and they should be on it. You know, the physicians under the assumption, you know, are still taking this. So and tell you to stop taking it. So you should be getting that refill in a timely mm -hmm. manner. But yeah, just going at the, at the do's and don'ts. Again, first thing on the list is use the patient portal. It's going to be the most effective way. You're not calling in way down that queue to say, hey, I'm running out of medication. Um, and when when you are, in fact, running out, at least a week prior, because as you know, it'll take time sometimes for the pharmacy to receive it, to fill the order for you to be able to go pick it up. Maybe, you know, you can't get there that same day, transportation, you have your own personal life. Uh, you don't want to wait until the very last second to say, hey, I'm on my last pill. Hopefully I can get my medication refilled by tomorrow morning. You don't need to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or yeah, exactly. So that's that's unrealistic. So having that buffer time, if there's a little bit of overlap, that's fine. You know, you want to get it down. Um, and then also just moving down the list there, letting the PCP know if, you know, these medications are having side effects. I wouldn't recommend, I'm sure I'm not a physician, but you can talk to them. You don't just stop the medication on your own without letting them know. Um, they're under the assumption that you have been taking this, this type of medication is in your system. And the way that it's prescribed is if it says to take twice a day with food, you should be taking it twice a day with food. Not, oh, I'll just skip this one because it, some of the medications, they want to have a certain amount in your system at all times. Um, and then also one other thing point now on the list here is if you are, you notice you're running low and you're trying to maybe stretch it out, sometimes we see patients who will say, oh yeah, I've been half dosing, you know, I'm supposed to be taking two pills a day. I'm just taking one a day because I think it might run out. Um, obviously not not the ideal approach there. Uh, so, so the, the, you know, the other thing is that when you don't have any more refills, that means your physician, your provider, wants to see you after you complete that cycle. So you have the medication given and then with one refill, after that one refill, if you call us for a refill, we won't, we won't prescribe that because that's the standard for us to see you. Uh, that means we may have already six months last time we have seen you or maybe even more. So then we are not right. gonna just refill uh, the medication that has zero refill. Yeah. So this is that kind is of like, let's thing. actually just uh, elaborate this. So then I want to make sure that this is clear. Uh, and maybe even, uh, Sean, for you, I know that you see this every day, but I want to make sure that everyone understands. So when physician or NP or the PA says, here's your uh, metformin for uh, initial 90 days, and then there's one refill, after that six months, don't call us for um, refill because that means you need to the be seen. Been used. Yeah. yeah, that means you need to be seen. So that's one of those, um, uh, you know, very uh, chronic issue that I see all the time. Same thing happens with uh, some of those uh, medications who may be under the narcotics. Mm -hmm. um, well, you have to be seen every three months for some of these. And then we can even send the prescription more than one month at a, at a time, but at a minimum, we have to see you in uh, three uh, three months. For example, if you are on Adderall, uh, you should expect uh, to get a, a random urine uh, analysis, and you can insist. The problem is you cannot insist getting these things mm -hmm. because we won't do it. So for you to argue with our call center and whoever is talking to you is not going to get you anywhere. So that's why I need everyone to have a good understanding of what's the expectation, what the expectation is. The expectation is we have to follow the medical standards uh, in order for us to do our job. So I just want to give you an example so then you guys would appreciate. 
some of these, and also I want to put this in perspective so there's no question. So there was a, um, again, survey follow-up, and the, uh, this was the, the husband who was the patient, but when I called them, he put me on the speaker phone, and the wife was talking, and she was, she was talking over him. And the issue was, we haven't seen them for 12 months, and they want refill. And she was arguing with me, and then she's like, oh, my you know, daughter is a nurse, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, it has nothing to do with what we do. I haven't seen your husband for 12 months, mm -hmm. and he has to come in. Yeah. So are you able to prescribe medication for him? No. Can your daughter? No. She's a nurse. So then you have to follow our orders. So now... Of course, when I have that discussion, it's a different uh, level. But when the call center has to get these uh, confrontations, it's extremely stressful because they are limited with what they can and they cannot do. So putting too much pressure on them isn't just going to make everyone else's life is, uh, more difficult. And we actually ended up uh, discharging quite a bit number of patients just because they didn't have the understanding of what's, uh, what the expectation is. So there are, uh, well, I always say that healthcare is the most the heavily um, uh, regulated industry. So liability is huge. Um, so for someone to expect us to just give medication without being seen for the entire year, ain't gonna happen. So it's not the right practice. There are some practices out there um, they may actually take those types of patients, but we won't. Mm -hmm. uh, we won't do that. So our goal is to uh, do our job at the best level, and then make sure that when we go home, we don't have to worry about uh, yeah. putting people right. in trouble. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now uh, on the scheduling, we also have do's and don'ts. I kind of covered maybe a little bit of it in the um, in the structure of the clinical integration, but uh, if you want to cover that yeah. as well. Um, so as we mentioned, a lot of it is with the reminders. So confirming those, um, like you said, the call or text reminder. Again, on those, when you're signing up, you can put your preference on what you want. Um, but just in general terms, you know, obviously showing up ahead of time uh, for new patients, there is that patient packet that actually you'd be filling out on your own at your own leisure, you know, the week prior or so when you know you have the upcoming appointment. That way you're not going to show up day one and then have to sit you know, balancing a packet in between your knees, filling out paperwork in the yeah. office for 45 minutes. So if you're able to get that packet downloaded online, print it out, fill it out at home. That way when you're showing up, obviously you have your packet, your ID with your insurance card, making sure your PCP is up to date on that insurance card. The right insurance is your primary. Um, you're switching insurances, obviously letting the office know. That way they can update on the chart. That way I know that saves the headache. Uh, both on our side with the billing, but also on the patients are going to be getting bills in the mail and saying, oh, uh, this should be paid, you know, X, Y, Z. Having that up-to-date documentation is obviously important. Um, and then just the do nots there is obviously don't arrive late expecting, because as you know, there's multiple patients seen in a day um, throughout the hour, multiple physicians in the office, very busy. If we wait around for you who's running 45 minutes late, you can't expect to be seen right then. Like, oh, I had an appointment, I should go to get in understanding that um that mutual respect there with the people's time and, and i can tell you that in medical offices the wait time is uh given so mm -hmm. i don't want to promise anyone that they won't wait so getting your coffee at starbucks takes 12 to 15 minutes so and you have to wait so uh, medical professions uh it's limited uh out there and we want to be on time for every time uh, we see patients, but that's sometimes it's not possible because there are patients we scheduled for uh, 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Someone takes maybe seven minutes, but someone may take 25 minutes, and then we still need to uh, kind of see all those people. And, you know, waiting, uh, and I'm not saying that that's the standard, but that's everywhere, and it's unfortunate that it's going to happen. Sure. It's just maybe easier to accept that. So I'm not going to be unrealistic and trying to overpromise everyone that they won't wait. You will be waiting. So um, yeah, and we I, wait for everything. So that why why are we not waiting for the physician? A key to the care you're getting because you wouldn't want you won't want every appointment to be you're in and out in that 15 or 30 minute time slot because then what quality care are you actually getting? Like you want the physician to be able to talk to you, discuss what your concerns are, discuss the uh, alternative options that you have to that care. So. It's obvious that some of these appointments will run beyond, but 
uh, to be expected because obviously every patient again is unique so it's not going to be a cookie cutter everybody's in the slot in and out like a factory line yeah. it's, there's give and take. So now uh the other uh do's and don'ts uh, the topic level we're going to cover is pain management uh we are going to actually you know uh, put this video out there after the live and then we want patient, patients to hear directly from me my practice do not uh, will not do any uh, pain management, chronic pain management uh, with the prescription. So we will not manage oxycodone. We will not manage Percocet. That's not what our specialty is. If because of some of the some of these things I see where patients are going to the urgent care, urgent care. Unfortunately, they do. Um, you know, they have we have some benefits from the urgent care. They can be utilized in a good way, but in many cases they don't. Uh, do the right thing and then give the patient for five day or five day of uh, oxycodone. Same thing is done by the hospitals, and then they expect us to do the same thing. Just because other people are jumping from the bridge doesn't mean that United Medical Clinic is going to follow that. We follow the medical standards, so that's that's our base. We will not do um, chronic uh, pain management. We in United Medical Clinic have a. In the United Medical Aid, you have a pain management specialty, and we expect them to manage these patients. So not only we won't do the pain management, uh, but we will definitely not do the uh, refill of the pain management over the phone. So this should be, I can tell you, all these things that I'm talking about right now covers almost 90% of the patient complaints because that's what the expectation is. So... um, now the um, the other thing, uh, if you want to cover the consults and the referrals part of it with the do's and don'ts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So again, uh, just showing you a general overview. Again, this isn't super specific; not every item covered. But consults and referrals. Um, so this is obviously for seeing specialists um, outside the PCP. So just some of the do's that we see there um, is uh, first off scheduling the appointment before self referring to a specialist. So come in, see your PCP. Don't just on your own say, "Hey, I, I've." I'm feeling the chest. I need to go see this cardiologist. Like I'm just gonna call. Like and then the cardiologist is calling us, and then they're and that's a referral. referral. They're like, we haven't seen yeah. or saw this patient. Exactly. So obviously, come in, have the PCP check you out first. Let them get a better understanding of what's going on. And if a consult is uh, is needed, obviously they would go ahead and do that. But perhaps it's something else that's causing you that uh, discomfort or something. They'll be able to better gauge what's actually happening. Um, again, commit to recommended testing by your PCP in a timely manner best practice to go uh, in network. So again, we have communications with our specialists, um, with our PCP offices. So we wanna be using the ones that are on the same page, have that same cloud uh, EMR chart access so everyone knows what's going on. Um, It actually just makes it a lot more easier when everyone's already aware of other pre-existing conditions, medical history. Um, Checking in with your insurance if the referral is required. Again, I think that's just recommended that you wanna see the PCP get that referral beforehand regardless. Um, and then just, this is similar to before, making sure that the right PCP is listed in your insurance uh, to prevent that delay, uh, getting that referral. And then the do nots on the right side, uh, don't forget to see your PCP prior to seeing the specialist. Also, I think it's recommended maybe afterwards seeing the specialist, but something alarming mm-hmm. does come up that you want your PCP to then be aware of, you know, this was found at my specialist, you know, they did this, you know, echo and found this, you know, the yeah. best result. Um, and then don't uh, refuse to, to recommend routine or diagnostic or prevent delay in diagnosis. So if they're saying you need to go get your test done, this type of lab work, whatever, um, it's needed for a reason. So, so uh, the uh, what our goal was in this last uh, 50 minutes, again, for United Medical Clinic patients, what to expect from us and what's the common issues that we see and how we can actually serve you better. So that is, again, uh, there are certain things that definitely the patient side needs to actually do uh, so that we can actually improve some of these services. But I want to point out one other thing that we didn't mention earlier. Uh, one of the survey uh, issues or one of the maybe uh, portal uh, requests that we get uh, related to your last consult and also like the refills with the authorization, prior authorization. Yeah. So a lot of Patients, they assume that uh, authorization is not uh, started from our side. It's not initiated. 
because they have to wait for a couple of weeks in some cases. So uh, I really need our patients to understand that there are two other big elements of those issues. One is the insurance. The other one is the pharmacy. There are some pharmacists uh, in this well, in the state of Delaware, and then I had to deal with one of them in August for my medications. Mm-hmm. So because of my uh, support at home, so I had to change my uh, prescription, the pharmacy from Greenville to Bear. The bear guy is um, pretty out there. He just, he thought I was uh, not using the prescription properly, although I can see all the history of when I refilled them. And he didn't refill it. Mm. He didn't refill my own medication and I own the practice. So uh, this is not, uh, there is no exaggeration. He did not fill. So I have to go back to my other pharmacy because they know who I am, I guess, because I've been in their system for so many years. Yeah. Although these guys can see that, but somehow that that they there was a uh, on call pharmacist um, who was covering, and he just didn't want to do his job. So make sure that you understand that um, this is this this can happen. So the other uh, part, the second one that I mentioned, insurance. Insurances do not process these things in a timely manner. Just like we have issues uh, with um, resources they have, although they have more money, uh, a lot more money than we do, So, but they still have resource issues. So sometimes these requests, they don't process it in a timely manner. So it takes up to two weeks. Now with this, I wanna make, make sure that, especially these weight loss medications, two weeks, it takes two weeks to get the authorization. Don't even get upset about uh, our office uh, not doing something. It's just we are just waiting on the insurance company. Now, everything that we have is trackable, so we can provide the electronic uh, ID uh, numbers for these transactions. So let's have a really good understanding and uh, good expectation of what's, um, what needs to happen so that we can have a pleasant um, uh, relationship and we can improve uh, what we are doing. In some cases, we are just damaged. Uh, we are just doing troubleshooting for Mm. Uh, patients who really don't want to follow through the instructions. And then that takes time away from other patients. So we want to, we are hoping that this session uh, is, uh, we were able to provide uh, hopefully some important elements of the expectation and the structure. So then uh, patients uh, find these, um, find these resources on their own and then utilize the right uh, elements, right uh, vehicles to reach out to us. Speaking of that, do you want to mention the YouTube? Uh, yeah, so um, as you're saying, the resource that we have available, so obviously this 2 p.m. session is every Friday, um, whether we have a clinical focus session with one of our PCPs or an outside specialist joining, uh, we also cover the billing side, so it better helps uh, help us better understand the billing process and kind of what may cause some of those delays and how it all relates. And then also um, our political ones uh, that we have with any uh, public figure who is maybe working on legislation that will impact the healthcare. So those are our 2 p.m. sessions. 3 p.m. also have the Bariatric Friday. So that's the entire weight loss journey. Um, and that's a, a, a cyclo- cyclical um, series with Dr. Yergao where we cover from day one, whether, you know, contemplating getting bariatric surgery versus, you know, the process of healing afterwards. Um, and then also we have our wellness webinars that we have on our 2 p.m. Uh, that's going to be second Friday of the month uh, in place of our 2 p.m. session we're on right now. So Donna, our dietitian Caroline, will join. Uh, we do cover various topics related to diabetes there. And then also our support group we have, so like a weight loss um, bariatric support group, a Facebook uh, support group we have. And then on our webpage, you'll see um, various different resources, whether it's behavioral health, you know, wellness uh, seminars, the dietitian, any type of those resources that you need, all available on our website. Um, so there's plenty of information out there and a lot of educational material that can be used uh, by our patients and everyone in the community. So uh, everything is available out there uh, on the channel. We are overreaching to almost 2.6 million views. So I know that people are watching um, uh, 2.5. So um, we want to make sure that these are uh, uh, reaching to the right people. 
Um, so uh, hopefully uh, we can do better in many aspects of uh, what we do for our patients. Well, thank you for uh, watching us and I will be back with our Bariatric Friday event uh, with Dr. Ergao in two minutes, uh, hopefully. And then we'll be also we'll be back next week with our other topics and other sessions. Thank you again and we'll see you soon.